In the 1990s, Greenleaf Gardens in the southwest section of Washington, D.C. is a neighborhood under siege. Without a witness, police cannot identify a suspect. The epicenter of that violence is Greenleaf Gardens, a housing project on K Street. The drug trade has reduced the neighborhood to chaos, according to Detective Steve Kirshner. Crack cocaine hit the city hard in 85, 86. Police believe the K Street crew has already murdered a dozen people who cooperated with authorities. What they don't know is how the gang is able to identify these potential witnesses. The main target of the surveillance operation is Vincent Hill, the K Street crew. The gang is led by Vincent Hill, a ruthless sociopath who seems to thrive on violence. FBI agents set up a stakeout in an apartment overlooking K Street. Like most of the residents of Greenleaf Gardens, he's sick of the drugs and the violence. In 1995, Bruce Spencer is shot five times at point-blank range by a K Street crew member. Somehow he survives. He is willing to identify the man who shot him. The task force immediately places Spencer in protective custody. He is registered at a DC hospital under the name John Doe. While Spencer recuperates, Agent Lissy and other investigators scour Greenleaf Gardens looking for the men who tried to kill him. On K Street, Agent Lissy and Detective Trugman find themselves face to face with Vincent Hill, the gang's notorious leader. All your witnesses are going to fact, everyone. Even your buddy who's in the hospital under the name John Doe in room, and he told me exactly what room it was. And uh, I shook my head as if I didn't know what he was talking about. But I knew exactly what he was talking about. They wanted to let us know that it was their business to locate witnesses and silence them. Investigators are even more determined to protect their witness. But word of Hill's threat reaches Spencer. Fearing for his life, the witness refuses to help investigators. Everything's working out. Almost not. The task force is frustrated, having lost another battle in their war against the K Street crew. According to Butchie Smith, the K Street crew usually kills people in response to a threat. But Pierce's murder was different. This time, it was all about greed. Investigators hope that Smith's inside information is the break they need to finally bring down the gang. At that point, then we knew, okay, now we can start to get the framework of an indictment ready so that we could go and start to prepare charges against these guys for crimes other than the drugs. Smith agrees to become an FBI informant in exchange for a reduced sentence. It's a risky decision. I'm dead. I'm done. If anyone finds out he's talking to authorities, Vincent Hill will have him killed. Technicians analyze a single fingerprint found on a screen door at the murder scene. It matches Swingy's prints, corroborating Butchie's story. What also about this was While awaiting trial in jail, Sweeney receives a copy of his own arrest warrant from his attorney. An unnamed source is listed as an informant against him. Two months later, just when it looks like the task force is about to put an end to the gang's operation, Robert Butchie Smith is gunned down in broad daylight. The FBI informant has been shot a total of 13 times, mostly in the head. Crack cocaine carries severe penalties. A conviction could get Vincent Hill and his crew off the streets permanently. 
notes was the total of Agents launch an investigation into the gang's crack dealing. But Hill's group is already one step ahead. Before the FBI can bust the K Street crew on cocaine charges, the gang suddenly shifts to selling marijuana. They realize when they were selling crack cocaine, you're looking at stiff time. Selling marijuana was a misdemeanor. More than likely, you wouldn't get any time for it. The demand is huge. Buyers pour in from the suburbs. The gang maintains its profits, minimizing the risk of jail time. It just took off like a rocket. If everybody was making money, uh, you know, people were making three, four, five thousand dollars a day just by selling marijuana. As the officers attempt their first undercover buy, Jim Scheider knows he is heading into dangerous territory. As soon as we turned the corner, my heart started racing. We knew that uh, there was no turning back at that point. Abdallah and Scheider look for a dealer, any dealer, to buy from. Then on a street corner, they spot Vincent Hill, flanked by his lieutenants. The FBI presses their advantage. Now what do we have here? Over the next six months, they continue to buy marijuana directly from Hill, gradually increasing the quantity. Each time, the sale is carefully photographed. Through the undercover buys, investigators discover that Hill controls everything that happens on the block. Buyers, many of them from the suburbs, made the dealers on K Street rich. The area provided few economic opportunities, so the lure of easy money proved a powerful recruiting tool. It was a huge money maker for him. There were occasions when he would actually front me drugs, which would mean he'd give them to me for free for payment at a later date. We had that kind of trust. And he even gave me good advice on when buying the weight. He would supply me with the smaller $20 bags. He gave me uh, packages of those at some points, and he would tell me how to juggle it or I mean, break it down and sell it in the quantity to my friends. And he gave me a couple hints on how to do that. For six months, the operation went smoothly. Then, the routine buy was everyone on going to. Well, at one point, when I made a buy from him, I got back into the truck and Jimmy was driving and I was in the passenger seat and Jimmy said, hey, he's, he's waving at you. And he was motioning like to roll the window down. So I rolled the window down and he said, hey, look, these guys over here, they're saying that your buddy's a police officer. He said, I know you're okay, but he said, those guys over there will kill you. In the fall of 1997, Montgomery pleads guilty to seven murders. As part of the plea agreement, the court seals details of his sentence and whereabouts. Police arrest Sam Carson and charge him with the murder of Teresa and Tarita Lucas. William Sweeney, already in jail on unrelated charges, is indicted for the triple homicide. Montgomery safely hidden, law enforcement begins to dismantle the K Street crew's infrastructure. Jerome Martin, Sean Coates, and gang leader Vincent Hill are arrested in the summer of 1998. <laughs>
like Boozy, or sit down and pick like a skinny nigga Sean Brady. I'm a nightmare, my dreams in a 30 So you know I'm about to take a nigga out early. I think a big South probably will cost me. Just look how the rims on my fucking car spin. Man, you ain't fucking with this young boy. I got sons and my sons got young boys. While I'm at it, rest in peace to my dead peace. Old dog, Lil' Kirk, Lil' George, and Lil' Greg. In the feds, you said them rap heads with sign school. I love you, Southwest. I love you right behind school. If you don't love nothing else, nigga, love Southwest. If you don't love nothing else, nigga, love Southwest. If you don't love nothing else, nigga, love Southwest. If you don't love nothing else, nigga, love Southwest. Yes, love Southwest. Yeah, this love Southwest. If you, don't, if you don't love nothing else. Yeah, nigga, just love Southwest. Yes. Niggas is candy.